Oh, I might have to figure out how to turn that off. But what's going on, Sovereign Nation? Episode one of the Sovereign Health Podcast. This is pretty darn exciting. I'm Daniel. If you're kicking around in the bankless DAO or the bankless world, you probably know me as Viking or Elite Viking. We got our man Josh here. You probably recognize him as nonsense <laughs> or no nonsense twice. <laughs> depending on what kind of a mood he's in. <laughs> this is going to be my co-host moving forward. I'm definitely grateful that I have somebody to roll with on this. The idea, the premise, the mission, the intention, everything behind Sovereign Health. I will give you a high-level overview, and then I'm going to kick it over to Josh so you guys can get to know him a little bit. But the intention behind wanting to start this up is I was, I was looking at the legacy world, the physical world, the world as we know it. And it is pretty obvious that we have two glaring problems. One, we suffer from a lack of leadership at all levels. There's no question about that. Look at any government, religious system, whatever. You can see it. It's clear as day, especially in corporate America. The other problem is health. If people put more time, effort, and energy into managing their health, we wouldn't have pandemics or any or disease or anything on the scale that we do. We've got this new economy, this new world forming in the blockchain space, in the crypto space. And guess what? If we don't have people like myself and Josh standing up wanting to make a difference, we are going to recreate the exact same dynamics in this new world as are super evident in the world that we're trying to get away from. Why? Why do we want to try and break away from that just to be running into the same problems? We need people on the forefront to say, this is great. I love this. But hey, if we don't focus on revamping the whole system from a holistic point of view, it's going to turn out to be exactly the same as the system we're getting away from. The intention behind this podcast is to help solve that, help you guys be healthier happier, fitter, whatever your goals are, develop you as leaders, learn how to breathe, move, most importantly, have fun and learn about crypto. With that, I'll kick it over to Josh and he can tell you what brought him over here, got him involved and he can do his thing. Thank you. So that's a really great, succinct summary over this whole project. Um, one thing that really caught my attention was that I don't really feel that there is a whole lot or enough that's being done uh, corporate-wise as far as health is concerned. And so I'm very much about encouraging movement, uh, greater movement, finding those pockets of movement, whatever way that you can get more movement into your life. My whole, my own company is built around this idea of pulling the rug out of excuses, right? So mm -hmm. there's no reason why you couldn't do what you need to do to take care of yourself. A lot of it is a lack of leadership in terms of uh, managing yourself in your own movement practices, um, or just you know having some place to go where you have someone who's knowledgeable that mm -hmm. can lead you in the right direction as far as movement. So this sovereign health, this idea of bringing this not just into the DAO and not just in, through the crypto space, but something that we can build out and make accessible to anyone and everyone who wants to implement something worthwhile that's easy to get into and accessible it was incredibly attractive to me as far as wanting to be a part of rolling that out. So that's what really brought me in is uh, I started hearing chatter like, hey, health, health and wellness and bing, you know, my <laughs> my radar is zooming in <laughs> on where those conversations are happening. And uh, it was really cool watching uh, you elite just kind of uh, roll through and really try to get uh, as many people on board with it as possible. And so it's been cool watching this uh, grow. And now now here we are having this conversation. That's really exciting. Yeah, when you uh, that brought up a couple of things, like 
that old cliche saying, you have no business leading somebody else if you can't lead yourself. Everything starts with ourselves. And I'm pretty sure when you first joined the DAO, you were talking about running like breathing uh, workshops and stuff with me, right? That was you with those ideas? Or was that somebody else? I'm pretty sure that was you. Uh, that might have been someone else. I don't recall. Oh, I thought it was you. Um, yeah, no, I remember um, we, I don't know at what point I jumped into the conversation about getting this going um, because, you know, there's a lot going on um, in the DAO you know, as we organize. Yeah. Um, but at some point, I remember popping into Ops General and just seeing this like whole thing coming on and people getting really excited about, hey, you know what? No, I need this and I'm willing to pay for it. And, yeah. um, you know, and so that was just uh, once I got the thread of the conversation, that's when I started jumping in. So we've had conversations about like uh, possibilities in terms of uh, how we want to develop this program out and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure about the, uh, the initial workshop ideas, but definitely on board to doing workshops and building out stuff. That's just going to be, um, beneficial to everybody who jumps into it. Yeah. Cause there's been multiple people that have approached me as this is getting spun up saying that they would love to learn more about meditation and how to breathe and center themselves. And I remember you saying that you've had a lot of ex experience in that, in that realm and different breathwork practices. Yeah, well, breathwork is, uh, I mean, in terms of movement, my primary passion is in yoga and my bookshelf is just, I've got, um, two blocks that are just um, spiritual readings and uh, all about nice. yoga, you know, and I've spent a lot of time in the space, not just learning how to move and flow, but really digging into the eight limbs and what it means to have a cohesive practice um, mm -hmm. that's inclusive of all of it. And meditation has been a big part of my movement. And it's something that has uh that tends to weigh pretty heavily on me whenever i'm not doing my due diligence in that so um it is something that's uh in terms of uh practice it's something that i feel is incredibly important as far as something that is centering um breath plays such a vital role in your ability to maintain a steady meditation practice and all of that can be really tied together with movement if you have the discipline and you have the consistency in your practice to learn how to bring those in together. So yeah, I'm all about, you know, setting, helping to bring other people on board who are struggling with this in, their, in, in these areas or are curious or really just acknowledge that they need more of it and want to figure out how to do that. That's huge. Like, cause we're, we're beta testing the sovereign health system right now. And, um, we said we wanted 20 people in 90 days. Uh, yesterday, the last time I checked, we had, uh, 12 or 14 people in there and I've added another three people back there. And I find it very interesting going through their intake forms. They like, don't get me wrong. It, it's, it's extensive. It's not like, answer five questions and you're done in a couple minutes. It's like okay. a roughly a 20 minute survey where you're answering on a sliding on a sliding scale. And what I'm noticing about the people that's really getting attracted to this initiative, they don't care about weight loss. They don't care about muscle gain. Their problem is set a sedentary lifestyle. The, everything got uprooted they're now sitting in front of a screen. They know they need to move more. They've got an average understanding of nutrition and movement, but they don't know what they can do to optimize their health, optimize their performance, and maintain a steady peak. It's, it's pretty like up, down, up, down. And they've noticed that their appetites have completely tanked because they're, they're stuck sitting around all the time now. They're not as active. And that's one thing that really impressed me about you is because like there's this consensus in the health industry that weight loss, muscle gain, and that's it. Nothing, nothing else exists in the world. 
But like this goes to show like we over 95% of the people interested in our program, that's not their concern. They just want to live a long, healthy and productive life and be able to show up in the capacity that they want to show up for their families and their loved ones. And that, that, says, that really says a lot about the quality of our network and the quality of the people in our network and how educated they are at the end of the day and knowledgeable they are. Totally. Um, I think that's super powerful. And in recognizing that this is where they're at, I feel that we're starting to see a shift culturally away from the... Um, you know, the, the weight loss and the crazy muscle gains and that sort of thing. You know, one of the big credos that I have in the, in my own business is that, um, I don't, I don't talk about weight loss. I don't talk about, you know, my whole thing is nothing feels better than strong. And if you eat right and you move well, your body will take care of itself. Yep. And you know, that's something that the more we can get that message out, the more we can proliferate that idea more we can get people out of these like hack diets and fad diets and, um, you know, these crazy unsustainable workout regimens, mm -hmm. um, the more healthier we can bring you know, the higher level of health we can bring people to, you know, it's not to say that like when you're not involved in like a fad diet or some sort of like crack workout, you're not stressed out about the results that you're getting from these things. You know, that's a whole nother, it's a whole nother level of health that we're, we're talking about when we get into like what actually happens in your brain when you are eating right and you are moving well, but well for your particular body, well for what you're supposed to be doing as opposed to what you think you're supposed to look like. Yeah, what you think you're supposed to look like or how you think you're supposed to be you think you're supposed to be is generally some sort of a bias that a family member peers or somebody put in your head and it's not you so when you're trying to live up to that image or that body image there's a huge disconnect a huge lack of integrity between who you are and who you think you're supposed to be and that really ties into the nature of the industry where it's very self-defeating, it's very punishment-based. Let's count calories, let's do this, let's do all these things that are not sustainable. Like, mm -hmm. I will probably never appeal to the weight loss market, and I will probably never appeal to, to the muscle gain market. Like, um, this November, I was like 143 pounds. Um, I had a dad bod, and now I'm like 120 pounds, no dad bod, but... I'm toned, fit, and athletic. And I've never had so much energy in my life. Like people aren't going to relate to the weight loss struggles because I don't have the weight loss struggles. People aren't going to, my body type isn't the type where I can just think about lifting a weight and I, I gain a bunch of muscle. And I don't care about that. Personally, I just care about living a long, healthy life and being able to show up in the capacity that I want to show up for people. And when you step back and you look at like this compliments what you were saying, when you look at and you change the frame or you change the lens and say, you know, I just want to optimize myself for this, that the weight loss doesn't matter. Everything else doesn't matter. There's no more punishment. There's no more pain. You learn how to have fun and enjoy the process. And in turn, what ends up happening is you're not forcing yourself to change your habits. Your habits are naturally changing and pulling you towards what feels good. And you end up often we're aiming for here. We end up way over here, surpassing what we initially set out to do just by having fun and enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Uh, getting back into working out, there was a time in my life where like, I just kind of let myself go. And there was a pivotal point where I decided that I wanted to do better for myself, you know, and getting back into it. Um, I struggled with eating well, and I struggled with just locking myself into a consistent practice of some sort. Yeah. And so when I made that decision to start changing my lifestyle, that's when I got really into yoga and yoga 
led me into other modalities of training. And I found myself spending a lot more time in movement. And the things that I was eating, or the things that I was craving for food, just completely changed. Whereas yeah. before, I would be, you know, when, when I was working in sales, so easy to just go and get fast food because it's there. <laughs> and, you know, all kind, all of that was just, I was eating like garbage, but it wasn't even a year in my training when I recognized that there was a huge change in what I was reaching for when I was hungry. It wasn't the, you know, the wrapped up snacks. It wasn't like a burger. It wasn't, um, you know, uh, something that's just easily consumable. It was, I was reaching for bananas. I was reaching for oranges. I was reaching for uh, broccoli and cauliflower. And not that I didn't like that stuff before, but I would have to go out of my way to make sure that I was eating that stuff because I knew it was good for me. But yeah. once I started getting really into my practice, I automatically gravitated towards towards those things and it was no longer an effort for me to actually put good stuff in my body it just became automatic yeah like that's that's so powerful and that really that really boils down to to behavior change psychology at the end of the day we don't always realize the impact of what we're doing on us but we'll naturally gravitate towards what feels good. We're comprehending it, just not on the thought levels or the conscious levels that we would normally think we are. And it has a cascading effect throughout our whole lives. Like I, I tend to take three pillars, um, even with, with my leadership, and, and it's health, wealth, and relationships. And they all feed off of each other. If we're not taking care of our health, we're not showing up for our relationships, our families, our teams, our staff, they're the ones who end up suffering. Eventually, our health gets run into the ground, but we're not healthy enough to support that lifestyle. We're now relying on the traditional financial system, insurance, healthcare, and all of this crap, all of these money grabs. And we're relying on people who actually take care of themselves to provide the tax money to take care of that health. And it creates this whole cascading thing. Our health, our wealth, and our relationships, they really do go hand in hand. And same thing, you can spin that and you can, I, like, I could spend probably hours just talking about different ways about how those three quadrants end up impacting each other. So we can get into it over time, but I'll, I'll leave that one there where that one is for now. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love it because that's, that definitely leaves us with another another topic that we can expand upon you know, and even come up with a series because all of this stuff is important. And all of this stuff is, you know, I'm sure there are people that are talking about it, but it's not being proliferated in a very big way. And that is one of the things that I like about what we're doing with the DAO in terms of crypto, but also having this as a part of that, because we have the potential to get this hurt by a wide variety of people. And if we can get people thinking in terms of how movement and how eating better can affect them just mentally, just in the short term, you know, that can, that by itself can go a long way. Yeah. We've got 87 days left to prove ourselves and prove this beta <laughs> test out. Um, I would say we're definitely there. And it does go hand in hand because for those of you who haven't heard about Bankless DAO or aren't necessarily familiar with it, because I know a lot of our networks aren't, Bankless DAO's mission is to help 1 billion people across the world onboard into crypto. Not to be confused with onboarding a, a billion people into the DAO. We don't want a billion people in the DAO, but we want to create media, education, and culture. And that's really what spurred the Sovereign Health Initiative and that kind of like, hey, let's see if we can brand something with Bankless to get this mes message out. It's all fine and great to be have that wealth focus, but you're, multi you're almost 20xing the impact if you consider your health at the same time. 
I love it. I lo I'm so excited. <laughs> Me too. That's cool. It's cool to see like just the DAO and even people outside of the DAO rallying around this, right? Because I'm I'm pretty vocal about what I'm into um, outside of the DAO. And like people in the inner circle are finding our, our Notion page, which has all of our high level operations and projects. I'm getting messages from our inner circle thing. Um, I'm keeping my personal network updated about, you know, Sovereign Health just started, first podcast is that. And like I'm getting messages of like, hey, where can I learn about crypto? How can I learn to develop my health better? And like, it's gaining a lot of traction, a lot of steam very quick. And like, this is just the beginning. Our solutions aren't blockchain native yet. And we're a long ways away from that because the company, the, the, the company is four and a half weeks old. And this initiative is like officially less than a week old because I'm not going to count the two weeks prior that I spent driving everybody off the wall saying, Hey, let's do this. Hey, let's do this. Like I was like, a few people have said, man, but like, you were pissing me off. Like, no, tomorrow. I was so sick of hearing you talk about these initiatives, but I'm so glad you never gave up because I get it now. And like down the road, as the Dow grows and we get more people involved, like maybe we can take some examples and make a gamified crypto health thing. There's a lot of solutions that we can go where people are working on their health and learning about crypto at the same time. And they're earning like maybe bank rewards or maybe we'll come up with a, with a health token or something like that that we can use to incorporate in there. Like there's so many different ways that we can go as, as this evolves and we grow it out. Like, and we're even getting people like, I think you, you were saw it, it was in one of our channels. Um, there was a physician even asking us if we knew how he could, him and his friends could onboard their traditional practices onto the blockchain. We're already getting this buzz around the platform. There's so much potential. The financial world and the health world are the two and they're so far behind. It's not even funny. Like Bankless is in a position where we can combine both of these outdated industries into an, an initiative under one umbrella and grow them in their own directions in a way that just makes sense and totally reshapes the future of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the fact that it's not blockchain native right off the bat. Like we're working towards that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, like, obviously, we all came together because of the crypto um, community at large. Right. But at the end of the day, like my heart is with people and I want the people that um, I'm surrounded by, the people that I'm involved with. Like, I want all of us to be successful. Right. And I want the people who are like listening in and starting to join us on this journey. Like. We all have the potential for success. And, you know, coming back to that idea of, hey, if you're healthy, like everything else falls into play much better. You know, like if we're all successful in some way, shape or form, starting with our health, starting with the way that we eat, starting with the way that we move, like moving into the relationships that we have, moving into, you know, the financial categories, like we can elicit a much more positive change and impact, um, you know, like a thousand fold then we could if we're just kind of slugging yeah. away and trying to fight our way through life with the way that culturally we've been doing you know um you know like not you and i but you know for most people who don't have a good grasp of what it means to be healthy you know and i have this uh I, I talk to a lot of clients and students about this too, where, you know, people just like, there's not a whole lot of time. We're a specialist culture, right? yeah. We're just like, you go to school for this one thing, or, you know, you've studied or practiced or done this one thing. And so you're going to be really good at that. Right. And, but in order to be really good at that, like you don't have time to spend hours learning physiology. Right. So that's where like people like us come in, like yeah. we come in with that, with that level of expertise. And so, yeah, it's, it's saying, hey, 
here's all these people. And we are doing all of these people are coming together to do something that we think is going to be beneficial for this entire world. And within this group of people, like here's people like you and I who are like, hey, like, let's make our people healthier because that's important, you know. And so we're bringing our own specialty into this realm to like help guide other people to uh, do better for themselves. And I think that's beautiful. That's, and that actually, um, you remind me, reminded me of some of the feedback I've been getting too um, from our, our beta people who are jumping in the program. It's like uh, when people are thinking about starting, they're like, what's the time commitment? I only have three hours a day to invest in something like this. I only have this, I only have that. And there's a lot of hesitation and reluctance because they're used to the fear culture. They're used to the guilt, right? The the game, the, the guilt, blame, and shame. They're used to people in our world stepping in and kind of just um, burying their head in the sand or throwing them under the bus and saying, no, like, and being super strict, super restrictive, like you're dedicating hours of day to this stuff. And I'm like, dude, your time commitment is anywhere from 15 minutes to maybe an hour and 15 minutes, depending on what you're doing today. Like the program, you're reading one article a day, which is maybe five, 10 minutes. If you have to answer some questions and do an assignment, maybe tack on five minutes. Other than that, Y'all, you guys are all making me hungry, by the way, because of your food journals. Everybody's taking pictures of their food and messaging it to me right from sun up to sundown. And I'm waking up to messages from people on the other side of the world with their food. And I'm like, I'm already getting hungry, guys. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a lot easier to just take a picture and upload it and say, okay, I was eating while I was distracted or eating while I was focused and here was while I was eating so that we can learn your habits and say, just make this small tweak over here. Maybe just, you know, maybe I see that you eat three meals a day, but you eat out all three of those meals. What can we do? Maybe we can just get you eating one meal at home a week. Just start there. Something small. No no blame, No 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 none of that start small and just add this on and they're so impressed with like even the time commitment and stuff and even just like assigning workouts in the app and stuff it's just like everything is so much more breezy you log in at the end of the day and you rate your day on a scale of one to five and say one or two sentences on why you feel that that was your day on those horrible days it's easy to go through and it's like it's awesome to be able to go through and give that encouragement and support on the horrible days or on the good days. I mean, it's awesome to be able to, to give that pat on the back and say, hell yeah, you got it. Take your wins and carry that, then duplicate that again. And um, like, I don't know what it's going to look like with running live classes and stuff, but that's where the hour and 15 minutes came in. Cause I know for your, for your workouts, like their ups and squats and stuff like that, it's it's technical, but it's not technical enough where you need an hour to train somebody. So you guys can just kind of jump in and hammer it out. I'm an animal flow coach, and there's a lot of technicalities that go into doing under switches and kick throughs. So I, in my classes, um, at least to start to look, build out a flow, I need pretty much a full hour to get in and teach people the different nuances over time. But once you learn how to go from like a side kick through and do a front step and do all these different things and link them together and do a nice flow, that's where those 15, 20 minutes hit workouts come out in my style, right? So it's like, there's a little bit of something for everybody and we can evolve it to a place where it's people can just pick and choose. Like they have like a little, maybe a little shopping list, right? Like, oh, this would be awesome to jump into nonsense is like 20 minute little workout session. That's all I got time for today. 
Oh, you know, I would love to have like a little bit more of a community feel and hop into one of the group group classes with Viking or Daniel and just learn how to do that. And then I can go take that on my own. Like there's a combination of things that people could do to switch stuff up and jump in. And, and really it's about empowering the community to find out what works for them so that they can build those habits to maintain themselves over the long term. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Gonna have a whole a whole movement menu. What are you gonna What are you gonna eat today? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised nobody's asked me for the nutrition guides yet, but uh, I have a feeling it, it'll be coming. Yeah, it'll probably be coming. It's uh, what you got. You got people onboarding now. They're getting in the habit of uh, following up with you about what they've been eating, what they've been doing. Right. And at some point it's going to come, okay, well, so I'm ready to take the next step in completely changing what I'm doing or, you know, so you're suggesting I eat one meal at home. What do you recommend that meal consists of? You know, yeah. that, that becomes a, that becomes a whole thing, but yeah. Um, you have all these tools at your disposal within the, uh, sovereign health program that are just waiting to be utilized. And the fact that, you're not saying, hey, this is what you're going to be following along with and you, you, you have to do these things, right? Makes it a lot easier for people to just kind of fall into it at their own pace. And, um, you know, we need a program like that. Yeah, it's a matter of going through and saying, hey, based off of the feedback that you gave me on your intake form, I see these as being the two or three highest value priorities for you. Am I right? Yes or no? Oh, okay. Your priority is over a little bit over here. I misunderstood how there's a bit of a disconnect in how you rated yourself. So this is what you feel most ready, willing, and able to work on. Let's tackle this over the next two weeks, and work you into this. And then the next two week segment, we stack on another little habit. And then we stack on another one. And that it's really at the end of the day, um, to, to steal the words from one of my mentors, 1% better and stronger every single day in every way. Like it's that simple. If we just focus on that little bit extra, that 1% better every single day, eventually that compounding growth is going to give you a pretty nice hockey stick curve. You're mm -hmm. not going to recognize your life at the end of the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm super excited, man. Uh, we're doing the thing. Yeah. What I would like to see happen sooner than later, um, I haven't quite figured out a way to get put feelers out and get uh, feedback on it just yet within the DAO. But I want to see a sub community built around it, um, similar to what I do with my personal programs on Facebook, where maybe have like a, a thread or a channel or something that's dedicated to community support, right? So you have the personal layer um, that's between you and your coach within whatever systems we're using. But then we have another layer, a community layer, where we can all lift each other up. You're not relying on Viking to be online. You're not relying for Josh to be online. You have a little bit more of a close, a gated community that you can say, I hit this, this wall, or I hit this win. And then instead of getting my way of doing things or nonsense's way of doing things, maybe a couple other people who've overcome those issues can step in as well and say, hey, this worked for me. Hey, that worked for, for me. And what I found, like having that community component within a program goes such a long way because every, like, as, as, as much info as we get from people about their lives, we're still not in their shoes. We're not with them 24 seven. We're still seeing fractional pieces of the picture. So when they're able to get that extra community level support, and say, this is where I'm struggling, or this is where I'm winning, and get those, um, even those non-coaching perspectives from other people, like that learning curve on how to find something that works, it just, it gets eliminated a lot quicker. Everybody feels better about themselves. And you see that everybody's human. 
And we all have the same struggles. We all go through the same stuff. We struggle with, more or less, we struggle with the same image issues in our head, whatever you want to call it. So to, to be able to have that social layer, as Wolfair would call it, uh, on the operational side of things in the DAO, having that social layer really goes really goes a long way in terms of, of encouraging people. And that's why also accountability is so important. Like um, the team, since the dawn of time, have known this. We're, if we're expected to do something on our own, we might not do it. We've been letting ourselves down our whole life. It's nothing. Is whatever. We're almost numb to that these days. Whereas if you throw a team into the mix, if it comes down to letting the team down, you're going to hell, come hell or high water, you're going to make it happen because you don't want to let the team down. So it gives that little, that little bit extra of a push for when people actually need it. Tribal. It's, it's in our like, DNA. We evolved with it. Getting kicked out of the tribe was worse than death. It was as little as like 50 to 100 years ago, even. <laughs> like it, it hasn't been that long where it hasn't been that much of an issue. Totally. Right. And, it's, and speaking of it being baked into our DNA, like it's not like we evolved over the last 150 years to not operate that way. Like that's not how it works. You know, so it's, we, we, we still have that. Yeah, it's going to be a long time before we evolve away from that, even if we even do. I don't think we're ever really going to truly evolve away from that at all. I think, uh, what time are we at here? Uh, I don't know how to see how long this thing's recording. I think we're coming up to our uh, our 20 minutes or so, hey? Yeah, I think we've been, we started a little bit after after the half. We're, uh, we're getting pretty close, but we can totally, uh, I think we're at a good spot where we can just uh, shut it down. And... Me too. Do you want to give like maybe um, as an outro, do you want to give a little bit of uh, history on, I know you, you kind of briefly touched on it. Maybe do you want to dive into your, like your, your history and your background and stuff like that a little bit more, and then I'll do the same and kind of wrap it up. Can we just um, um, tell people like your your qualifications and your experience and stuff like that, so they know it's not just like some random avatar giving them random advice? Yeah, I uh, I did sports in high school. I was really active, so I did uh, wrestling, cross country, and swimming, and that pretty much set the tone for you know the way that I would work out, and the way that I do work out. You know, even now is. Um, it's, you know, particularly in wrestling, the kind of stuff that we had to do when you're going face to face against another human being, yeah. like, you're not being lazy about how you're training. And yeah. so um, there were a few interview interview. There was like a, almost a decade of time between when I graduated and when I kind of came back into movement. And during that time, I just let myself go. And totally, I just feel myself falling apart. And um, I didn't want that to happen. I was living with an ex of mine at one time when uh, she wanted to go and do a yoga class. So we went and did a yoga class. And I hated it. Like, I was the only dude in the room. You know, there were, it was my ex and like five other women. And they looked like they were just having a grand old time flowing through the whole thing without any trouble. Yeah. And I'm like dripping sweat on my mat. There's like the river of Joshua, like just pouring everywhere. And I just remember walking out saying, Hey, um, I'm never, I'm never going to do this again. This was miserable. And uh, I'll like, bring you back. Damn it, to class, this was a like, test or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it was just like, I, you know, and there's that, that idea that yoga is this like very easy thing. We're just going to go and stretch. Right. And that's not what it is at all. And that was like my first crash course in like understanding that. But it was a point when I moved out, I had, uh, you know, come back home and just everything was just like everything had fallen apart. Absolutely everything. I need, I needed to hit the reset button. And I just remember the real last open that I got in yoga. And I remember how like that was minimal in terms of the work that I was doing when I was in wrestling. So I was just like, I'm just going to go 
back to that because that seems like a great place to start. There's a gym that was opening up around the corner and they were going to be offering yoga classes. So I went and signed up and then I went and bought a mat and I bought a mat bag and I said, now I'm invested. I, I need to go and do this thing. And in an effort to just like not totally immerse myself right away and burn myself out, I was like, mm. I'm going to go three times a week. I think that that is viable. That's logical. It's rational, right? So I did go three times a week. And after about a month, I was just absolutely in love with it. I started going every single day. And then after about six months uh, from the time that I started, um, I thought, hey, if I get back into weightlifting, I'll be able to build my muscles up in a way that's actually going to help improve my practice uh, when I'm in class. So I started doing that. And that led into, you know, another six months later, uh, one of the teachers was like, hey, we're going to be doing a training. If you want to teach yoga, come and do this training. Um, we're going to be building everything up. And I'm like, I don't want to teach yoga. I just want to be better like at, yeah. at practicing. That was where my <laughs> head was at. So I went to the training. I went and did the whole, the whole thing. Um, and at the end of the training, we were supposed to present like our own class. And so I, I taught my portion of the class and I hadn't even finished yet. And the instructor was just like, Hey, like you're ready. Um, come and see me for a new hire packet when we're done here. And I'm like, that's not at all where I thought this was going to go, but okay, why not? You know? Yeah. And so, yeah, so that was the start of my teaching in um, group fitness and yoga. Uh, shortly after that, I got my APA certification for group X. Shortly after that, I got my NASM certification for personal training. And so, um, yeah. And then it's always the game of just like constantly educating yourself, you know, but over and above like the CEUs, I, I spend a lot of time in, um, I spend a lot of time in books. Like I spend a lot of time just really digging into all the benefits of what does it really mean for us to benefit from movement, you know? And, um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at now. I'm, uh, I run my own business called Street Movement that is entirely online, you know, and I teach online classes. Uh, I teach online yoga classes. I teach, I run online fitness programs. And my whole thing is, hey, like, how can we, how can I get the people who are coming through my programs and my systems to feel better? Nice. And be stronger. I, I trigger a lot of people with this one, but I am pretty well known for saying that uh, body weight disciplines are a lot harder than weights. Like anybody can go and anybody can go and, and pump some iron around. That's that's not impressive. Can you move your body? Like that's impressive. <laughs> you probably seen it too like people join the the body weight classes they're like oh yeah like you know i can bench or squat like two three times my body weight whatever and they barely make it five ten minutes in class and they can't even hold themselves up anymore and you're like come on man I totally, totally. <laughs> well it's, it's one of my favorite things and i see this all the time because at one of the gyms <laughs> that i teach at the group exercise room is right next to the weightlifting room and so you'll get guys who they see a yoga class going on and they're finishing up like whatever set they're doing. They're like, oh, dude, they're doing yoga. Let's go stretch. And they'll come in and they'll roll out a mat. And my favorite was one time it was two guys had come in there. They set up right at the back of the room, uh, started just jumped in where we were at in the flow. And then not even 10 minutes later, I hear one of the guys going, this is hard, bro. <laughs> And the other guy going like, dude, I can't hang. And they rolled their mats up and they walked out. And it's like, I mean, it's it, that would like, that would have been me had my girlfriend not been next to me in that very first class that I went to, you know, like, like the reality is, is, is I was not prepared for what that entailed and they were not prepared for what this entailed. And they rarely are, you know, because we see these very pretty pictures of yoga and these like beautiful women doing these very pretty postures that like are impressive, but we don't recognize how much work goes into it. 
you know, and yeah, being that it's all body weight, it's like mind blowing. Like I'm very much in the calisthenics. Like I'm currently working on trying to get to a plunge, you know, and something like that is just, you're not going to push 300 pounds and then just go into a plunge. Like that's not how it works. (laughs) (laughs) So, but yeah, so that's my background. That's where I'm coming from. That's where like I'm locked and loaded and, and, and working through. Um, what about you? So you've mentioned that you're, uh, you're animal flow certified, right? So you, that's like a big part of, um, that's part of, that's a big part of what you do. What else do you do? Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll share my journey because I don't, I don't necessarily get into it too terribly much, but like <clears throat> my, my first, like my first gig was a dishwashing job. And in six months I worked up from a dishwasher to a line cook. Um, I was known as the dish manager or some stupid thing like that. Um, I spent eight, nine years in the restaurant industry. I had a boss at that first gig. Um, he was just a real piece of work. He was, um, he was spiking my drinks with MDMA to get me to be happier and perform better at work. Uh, my ex fiance actually caught him one day near the end of our friendship, like after years down the road. And like, I was a very toxic person to begin with. I liked to yell. I liked to get up in people's faces. Like, like I, like, yeah, I was, I was, I was a very toxic person when I was younger, but I was like, once I realized that once she found out and it came to light that buddy was spiking my drinks with drugs I was like, that's why when I drink with him, I'm like a much pleasanter person to be around. And when I drink not around him, I'm a miserable douchebag. You know, I'll just put it that way without dropping Pierce words. And um, like, I went on this, I went on this massive, I was on this massive bender. Like my dealer thought I was distributing at parties. I was doing so much. And um, I woke up, I woke up one day and uh, I was a smoker at the time and I sat in my garden and I was looking at my garden because I was big into that at the time I had a spot bar and I was like I, I started realizing just how toxic and destructive my life was and how little I was taking care of myself and I was like my garden should not be the only beautiful thing about my life like my life should be beautiful why am I sitting here drowning myself in substances, trying to kill myself, being a miserable piece of work, dragging everybody around. And uh, I'm glad that my stepmom came home when she did. I'm thankful for that because I had, uh, I just, I picked up the phone. I had called my soon to be ex fiance um, before we hooked up. And I was like, yeah, you're like nine hours away. Um, Can I come live with you and clean up my life? And I literally, I packed up my car And I just went to, I like everything that I deemed valuable. I was just packed my stuff and I was ready to leave. And I wasn't going to say goodbye to anybody. I wasn't going to quit my job. I wasn't going to do nothing. I was just going to leave because I wanted to get away. And uh, my stepmom came home, caught me packing out of the the driveway. And she's like, Daniel, where are you going? Like, maybe you want to consider at least saying goodbye to your family. And I made it to my pot dealer's house at the time to grab some weed. And then I was like, you know what? She's right. I don't want to be right. I don't want this to be on my list of regrets (laughs) when I get old. Mm -hmm. Um, So that led me to getting into like the traditional finance world. Um, I got declined for life insurance because I had was doing so many substances through that time period of my life my liver and kidneys were failing. I was on my deathbed. They were secreting bile into my bloodstream. And um, I was like, no wonder. And that was just adding to how toxic, uh, how toxic of a person I was. Because I had no energy. My brain was all over the place. I felt like everything was attacking me all the time. I was trying to become an entrepreneur and like nothing was working. And, um, I joined a a coaching program and, uh, one of the things was just, one of the things was power hour every single morning. That's it. You have a green smoothie and you get your sweat on, you journal and you meditate, you learn something new about business. You find somebody to teach it to, you find two people and you send them a message of love, honor, 
or appreciation every single day. And like, I was super inconsistent when I started, like I would, I would like, I was trying to do like 10 X programs at the time and I would get through like five push ups or whatever. And I would just be done. And I'm like, that's it. I'm good for three days, four days. But like similar to what you had mentioned, as I started learning and as I started realizing how much better I was feeling, things just started naturally gravitating. And like, it was like just a little bit more, a little bit more. And next thing you know, my new family doctor, because I'm not even in the same province, I'm in Canada. um, But I'm like, I'm like 12 plus hours away from where I used to live now. Um, My doctor's like, dude, I don't need like, I feel, I feel bad that you come in here every single year for your physicals. Like you're, you're, you're a business owner. You got stuff to do. Like you shouldn't be sitting around in a doctor's office waiting for tests all day with how, how, how healthy you are. And like, I was like, holy crap. Like what if I turned my mess into my message and I took all of my life experience from being a chef, from being in finance, um, from just learning how to take care of myself. And, you know, what if I use that to help other people? And then that led me down the road to getting licensed as a, as an unbeatable mind coach to work with Mark Devine and his team. Um, so that is a pretty in-depth, like health and leadership, executive coaching, team building, culture building. Like, it was a system that I could combine literally all of my life experience into one. I got certified to help people with their nutrition. I got certified as an online trainer and certified to help people in animal flow. And like all the time, like it's so funny, people will come into my animal flow flow classes and they just die because it's body weight training. But they stick with it. And then they realize all of their other weight training gets enhanced. Everything else they do gets enhanced. Um, Because animal flow to children, it looks like we as adults are crawling around in animal movements. They think it's playtime. They want to join their parents. My clients are teaching their kids how to box breathe before bed, and their kids are almost instantly falling asleep every night, asking them to do box breathing with them before bed. Like It's turned into, it's gone from a me turning my life around to show up in the capacity that I want to this multi-generational cascade. People working on their finances, working on their businesses, their health, the relationship, everything all at once. And it's not even overwhelming. It's just that 1% better a little, just every single day, just what can I do to find that 1% and and stick with it consistently? Here we are. That's awesome, man. That's an incredible story. It was a long journey and I still feel like I got a long way to go. (laughs) We all do. We all do. But yeah, that's not something that you'd be able to condense, you know? Um, Yeah. Like anything's possible. And can someone just change their mind and completely do a a 180? Like, sure. But how often, how often does it happen? And how, how, um, how realistic is that in most cases, you know, and yeah. that's, you know, the biggest, the biggest takeaway is that progress isn't linear and it takes time. It's like that uh, movie plot where buddy's going to work and falls in a hole, he wakes up, same thing, falls in the hole the next day, the third day, they're aware of the hole. So maybe they start going around it. And then eventually they realize, you know, it's just not worth it. I'm just going to go a whole totally different way altogether. And when it comes to learning DeFi, when it comes to learning crypto, when it comes to bettering our health, it's the exact same thing. When we get started, we're going to trip up. We're going to hit those walls. We're going to fall into those holes. And it's okay. It's life. What matters is you start becoming more aware and you start closing those loops, closing those loops, closing those loops. Next thing you know, you're over here and you're no longer struggling over here. <laughs> but different levels, different devils. <laughs> That's great, man. That's uh Yeah, I love it. Cuz it really just does seem like we're coming from the same heart. Like we, all, we, we had our own separate paths to arrive at where we've come to, 
And there's just a very strong desire to help other people along this path as well. We're going to crush it, man. There's, we already are. Like it's, it's hard to comprehend just how, how powerful this is right now because it's so new, but um, there's a lot of signs. And one of my big things is micro goal setting. I love, I'm a big picture guy. I need that, but it gets very overwhelming sometimes unless you break it down into those little micro goals and micro steps. Mm -hmm. Totally. But yeah, we're, we're doing it. This is, uh, this is one of the micro goals, getting the podcast going, you know, and this is just yep. one, one facet of this whole thing that like you're bringing to bear. So super excited to be uh, on board with this. Me too, brother. I'm looking forward to it. I think this is a good place to wrap up. Um, I don't want to be turning people off with long episodes. I know we already talked about that. <laughs> Let's save some stuff for the for next week's episode. And uh, I will catch you on the flip side and kill this recording unless you got anything else to add. Yeah. Ready right. to uh, continue it on for the next one. Awesome. Thanks, bro. We'll chat soon. Tune in, guys. Sovereign Nation, when you watch this, hashtag Sovereign Nation on Twitter, wherever. I haven't done any hashtag research, so that might get thrown out the window. But uh, let's see if we can make that a part of our community. So whether you are in Bankless now or not, you can join the conversation. Have a wonderful day, guys.